All right, so I thought we'd talk a little bit today about the Rings of Power and attention to detail and why it matters and why this show has essentially failed at some of the basic techniques used to make shows coherent uh, to the viewer and to you know sort of give us a sense of time and place. Um, early on in the show, at the end of the first episode, it does anchor the four main storylines together on the same exact timeline, right? So there's a comet flying above the elves flying above the Harfoots, flying above uh, Arendir and Bronwyn in the Southlands. And while this is all being shot, we see uh, Galadriel on the ship headed to Valinor jump off the ship. So as that comet's landing near Nori, she's jumping off the ship into the ocean. So right away, the show has established all of this is taking place at the same time. Uh, that, that we're not dealing with, you know, multiple timelines that take place hundreds, hundreds of years apart, etc., etc., etc. This is all essentially on the same, you know, anchor point. Um, from here, you know, we break into several different time, you know, different stories. And uh, there's no indication moving forward from this point that those stories are taking place at wildly different times, right? Everything seems to be happening concurrently, happening concurrently. I can't talk this morning. Uh, so, you know, what's going on in the Southlands? What's going on with the Harfoots? What's going on with Elrond and Durin? And what's taking place in Numenor are all happening at the same time, give or take. Now, the problem with that is that when we get to that battle scene, it appears that, you know, while they're, you know, setting their trap for the orcs, the Numenorians are sailing across the ocean, an 1,800-mile voyage. It's not a close trip from Numenor to Mordor. Um, and so the problem with that is that it, it, it makes it feel like fast travel, right? It makes it feel like they show up having barely traveled at all. Now, one solution for this is to structure your show a little bit differently. You can, you can use more establishing shots. You can pace things differently. You could, for instance, have skipped the entire fifth episode story in Numenor with the burning of the ships and, and all that unnecessary conflict between Isildur and his friend and his father. You could have shown the Numenorians traveling that episode. You know, it wouldn't be taking place, obviously. It would still be weeks of travel, but at least they'd be showing that they're on their way before the battle began in episode six, because that the episode starts with the battle. So right away, we're having the orcs attacking the, the, the tower and, and Arendir setting his trap and all of that. It's kind of an ludic a ludicrous trap. Ludicrous, luda, I can't talk. Uh... But during that, we see the Numenorians sailing. And then during the next night, we see them riding. And, it, and, and the, the pacing is so off because we're talking about a multi-week journey, but it's taking place concurrently, again, with the two-night battle. This is simply poor editing and poor structuring of your show. You, you can make this work without, you know, people, people, when they're pushing back on me on these arguments, they're like, oh, you want to show more walking, more boring travel stuff? We want to make the show slower? No, I don't want to make the show slower. And I don't want to show a, an inordinate amount of traveling. But there are ways to convey that time is passing. There's ways to convey that these timelines aren't exactly on the same. You know, there are just multiple tricks when you're making a film or you're making a TV show to show the passage of time, to show the passage of distance, and and to to indicate where in the timeline these different stories are taking place, because this is not the kind of show that's purposefully obfuscating the timeline, right? We have shows like that, like Westworld or the first season of The Witcher, where they're they're purposefully tricking us into thinking there's one timeline when really there's multiple timelines, and they're doing that because there's twists and surprises that are delightful to the viewer. But here, there's no reason to deceive. There's no reason to trick. What, what they need to be doing is showing that, that this is a vast world and that it does take time to get places and you can't just magically appear at the scene where you need to be. Now, that's another thing. This is another attention to detail issue. How did they show up at that precise moment at that precise village? Right in the nick of time to save the day. Now, people will say, well, Halbrand, he showed them on a map. He's from the Southlands. Okay, sure. The Southlands seem to be a pretty big area. How does Halbrand know that the orcs are going to be right there? I mean, assuming, as everyone is pointing out, that they didn't just teleport back and forth, Halbrand must have left the Southlands months prior. Because he had to sail out all the way to Numenor, essentially, 
which again is like 1,800 miles, get shipwrecked by the big Leviathan thing, float around for however long before Galadriel meets him, and we're going to get to that in a minute, get rescued by Elendil, get to Numenor, stay in Numenor for a while, and then travel all the way <laughs> back to the Southlands. Is it many, 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 many weeks, several months at least, at a bare minimum, that he's been away. And yet he knows exactly where the orcs are going to be, even though it's a village where he clearly hasn't been before, because no one there recognizes him. When, he, when, when Muriel introduces him to Bronwyn, she doesn't recognize him as the king. She only recognizes him as, uh, as, as having that sigil. And she asks him, are you the king? And here's another problem with the Southlands. Like, what is the Southlands? Where are the details that, that can root us in an actual place? There, as far as we can tell, there's a couple villages in all the Southlands. They've come to rescue a couple villages with a couple hundred people tops. Is there a castle somewhere where the king is from? Like, I get it. Like, are you if you're trying to mirror the Aragorn story, right? Aragorn is a ranger. He he wasn't. No one knew that he was the king, and then he comes back to Gondor, and and, and it's revealed that he's the heir of Elendil and all that. Okay, but there's still, you know, Minas Tirith, there's still places, there's still some kind of society that we have some sort of grounded understanding of by the time he's introduced as king. Where's the city in the Southlands where the king resides? Where's he from exactly? He's not from this village. How did he know? The elves who have been sitting in watchtowers, patrolling this area, never saw any of these ditches or trenches. Presumably they hadn't reached this area yet. And yet Halbrand knows that this is where the orcs are going to be. Again, yes, you can just swallow your disbelief. You can just gulp it down, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And even if Halbrand had like a detailed report from his spies in the Southlands of where the orcs would be showing up at the exact moment to save the day is preposterous. It's also preposterous that they would hunt down uh, Adar, take the, the little bundle from him that was so important, and Galadriel, who desperately wants to find clues about the enemy, wouldn't even open it and take a peek. She would just give it back to Erendir, who also wouldn't open it. He would just give it to Theo, who would finally open it, noticing probably that it's not the same shape or weight as the sword hilt. So that switcheroo could have been clever if Gladriel had immediately opened it, and then they were like, oh crap, this isn't it. We better go find who has it. And then the Mount Doom explosion had gone off. Although the Mount Doom explosion, speaking of details, the magical sword key... All it does is break a dam. The dam requires that all these tunnels and trenches are dug to, to f flow the water into Mount Doom to get it to erupt. Okay. Well, what happens if nobody digs the ditches? Or what happens if somebody finds the key and twists it before they're dug? Does the dam just break and all the water just flows out to nowhere and then your whole M M Rube Goldberg machine designed to, to set off Mount Doom and create mortar just doesn't work? Really? This is the plan? <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I just think a magic key that makes a volcano erupt makes a lot more sense. It's like, this is a magical world. You don't have to create mousetrap style machines to set off volcanoes. You can just have a magic sword. You know, maybe it could have, um, when he twisted it, the key could have like sucked all of Waldreg's blood into it, right? And that blood would have caused the magic to work and the volcano explodes. But then how would, why would they have them digging ditches? Well, how about they don't have them digging ditches? How about the orcs capture the elves and make them their prisoners? In, in, because they're just a war party of orcs who are taking over the Southlands. They don't need to be digging ditches. <laughs> they, can just, they can have them hauling spears. Like this whole elaborate setup doesn't need to exist at all. Uh, so... How about, how about Halbrand? Rumor has it he's Sauron. There's a lot of clues. There's leaks. There's all kinds of stuff pointing to him being Sauron. Okay. So how does Galadriel meet Sauron? Well, she's sent by Gilgalad to Valinor. And at the last second, she hops off the boat in the middle of the ocean. And then, miraculously, is rescued by a group of survivors on a raft, a shipwrecked raft of sorts. One of whom is from the Southlands. Now... 
this well they're all from the southlands but this one gives her the, the the big news that the orcs are there in the southlands the only realm in middle earth that doesn't get a name like numenor or or eregion or linden it's just the southlands don't worry it'll get a name soon um the coincidence of just finding the guy who knows about the orcs in the middle of the ocean is already like, really? But then to make him the Dark Lord himself, who she's trying to track down, like that requires so much contrivance and chance and crazy luck. Like that's not how it works. Like, okay, you might say, well, it's crazy luck that Bilbo found the ring in the first place. Well, see now the thing about the ring is that it's always trying to get back to its master, right? So, you know, when Isildur loses it and it, it falls into the river, that was, you know, the ring trying to get Isildur killed so the orcs could find the ring and bring it back to Sauron. But it doesn't go the way the ring wanted and it gets lost in the river. But then, you know, Smeagol finds it and he takes it. But then he hides deep down in the, in the tunnels under the mountain. But the ring wants to get away, so it slips off his finger just at the right moment when Bilbo's coming by. See, there's a reason that this is happening. It's a magical reason, but it's a reason. Gilgalad sending Galadriel to Valinor, her jumping off the boat, finding a ship that happens to have Sauron on it, and then being rescued by Elendil and taken to Numenor, where conveniently there's an army just waiting. 300 men to, and 300 horses to fit on these three small ships. It's really quite something speaking of attention to detail where did they put all those horses i don't know uh the the just the, the coincidences alone are staggering but the fact that then galadriel is portrayed as someone who wouldn't recognize sauron is absurd because when sauron came as anatar to the elves gilgalad elrond they did not trust him it was only celebrimbor who trusted him and only then because of his ambition Right, he blinded himself with ambition to create these wings of power. So, oh goodness. Um, there's lots of little things like that, right? Lots of little failures in attention to detail, poor editing, poor pacing and structure that makes the show feel choppy. It makes it feel rushed and slow at the same time. It makes you, it breaks your immersion because you think to yourself, wait, that doesn't make sense. Why didn't they check that little bundle? Wait, how did that tower fall down with just one rope getting shot by an arrow? What, what kind of tower is built like that? You know, um, you know, or like, why did Gilgalad send Elrond to spy on his friend without telling him what it was all about when they already knew about Mithril? What? But well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, all these little things, right? Like, those ships with 300 men and 300 horses also have to have all the sailors. They also have to have servants and cooks. You know, who, who's feeding the horses? Who's cooking, who's cooking the food? I mean, we're talking about weeks and weeks of travel, all the supplies they need. I mean, we saw in one of the ships, they were down below, and there was, like, barrels of oil. But where were they fitting the hundreds of horses? I mean, there's just so many things like this. And not everything has to be perfect, but they add up. It adds up. And no, you can't hand wave it away and say, oh, well, it's a fantasy. Yes, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. That doesn't mean you can just do any implausible thing. Fantasies, like any other story, are built on attention to detail. Some degree of realism. I mean, Tolkien was obsessed with that stuff. You know, he, he was obsessed with maps and distances and, and making these things plausible. Making And things took time with Tolkien, you know? I mean, sometimes too much time. I mean, think how long Frodo waits around in the Shire before he finally leaves. You know, they condense that in the Lord of the Rings movies, and that's fine. Because it's still stuck to the letter, to the, to the spirit, rather than the letter of the story. And I don't even care so much about it, about, like, the appendices being portrayed perfectly. I really do think you can have a lot of, uh, a lot, take a lot of liberties with those. But you still have to pay attention to these details, and you still have to tell a story that makes sense. This does not make sense. All right, done with my rant. Thank you for watching. Uh, maybe check out House of the Dragon. It, it has gotten really, really good, and I will have a review of the, of the new episode up shortly. So thanks for watching. Peace. I will talk to you next time.